of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask you, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and, and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth and by the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt around his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. A cow and bear shall browse together with a little child, and the lion shall eat hay like an ox. The baby shall play with, by the cobra's den, and the child layest hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
just is the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and in fullness of peace. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instructions that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness to confirm the promises of the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Yesterday was a very surreal experience for me because yesterday morning we had the funeral here for Nick Theophilus, the paramedic from Penn Hills that was killed in the line of duty last week. And um, it was a lot. The first, the funeral was at 11 o'clock. The first group of emergency responders that were gonna be here showed up a little bit after eight. Um, so by the time the funeral started, there were three lanes of ambulances in my driveway. There were fire trucks up the entire length of the driveway from Stotler Road to the top of the hill. They were parked all along the, the side of the road of Stotler. They were parked all up in this neighborhood up here. All those neighbors must just hate me right now because I don't think they could leave their, ho their, ho yeah, their houses yesterday. I also don't care because it was worth it. Um, I don't know what the seating capacity of this church is, but we were way past that. I'd, I would assume this holds about 400. We probably, we easily had 600 people here yesterday. I don't know how we made that work. Um, I also, considering there were a bunch of firefighters here, don't think we're gonna get in trouble with the fire marshal, so that was something. The, um, the procession to the cemetery was such that I'm pretty sure I was at the graveside before the last truck left here, and we took the long way to get up to Mount Hope. There was a flyover with two life flight helicopters. It was, it was a lot. It was a privilege, it was an honor, um, but I'm a worrier, and so I invested a lot, like too much energy into that. And so, um, so this is the gospel for today, huh? Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> what do we have here? Um, it's not the first time I've looked at this, about the third or the fourth, but not the first time I've looked at this. So the ideas that I have for this morning are very incomplete, so just bear with me. But um, you know what I'm fascinated by, what, what Matthew doesn't tell us about today's gospel that I would love to know is just the reaction of the people to John. It was John saying, there is one mightier than I coming after me. So how does that make them feel? Because you've got this huge group of people that are, are kind of walking away from their daily life and they're taking time out of what they're doing and they're, they're starting to come to grips with their sinfulness or at least with the things that they need to fix and they're going out to this kind of remote area of the Jordan River to be baptized. And they want to walk away from everything that, that's going wrong. They, they know that they're not right. They know they could do better, and so they're going to John to learn how to be better. They want to be healed. And then John says to them, there is one coming after me who is mightier than I am. And that's just got to, that's got to be upsetting for them to hear that. And then you wonder what their reaction is when he sees the Pharisees and the Sadducees come and he calls them a brood of vipers. Like, those are fighting words. So what's going to happen there? What do the Pharisees and Sadducees feel like to be called a brood of vipers? I can't imagine that gave you warm and fuzzies. And, and you know, how do you react especially not only to be called that, to, but to be called that in front of other people? I just think there's, 
there's a lot of things happening in people's hearts when they hear John say, there's one mightier coming after me. And it makes me think about that too. Like, you know, there's, there's a mightier one coming. And am I prepared for that? And do I want that to happen? I do, but do I really? Am I living like that? And so thinking about that whole scene, it made me think of one of my favorite pieces of literature, clearly a masterpiece in the English language, a book that will stand for all time, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I know it's a kid's book, but Jesus also says that the childlike will enter the kingdom of God. So, you know, it is what it is. There's a scene, if you haven't read the book in a while, and you should, but if you haven't read the book in a while, there's a scene kind of early on in it when the children have all crossed through the wardrobe and they're in Narnia and they find this snow-covered wasteland and they're trying to make sense of where they are and their, their minds are a little bit blown simply by the fact that Narnia is real and now we have all these talking animals and what do we do, but they've met the beaver and the beaver is taking them back to his, his burrow to meet his wife and, and they're learning about Aslan for the first time. And the beaver says, they say Aslan is on the move, perhaps has already landed. And now a very curious thing happened. None of the children knew who Aslan was any more than you do, but the moment the beaver had spoken these words, everyone felt quite different. Perhaps it has sometimes happened to you in a dream that someone says something to you that you don't understand, but in the dream it feels as if those words were the most, had the most enormous meaning either a terrifying one, which turns the whole dream into a nightmare, or else a lovely meaning, too lovely to put into words, which makes the dream so beautiful that you remember it all your life and are always wanting, wishing that you could go back into that dream again. It was like that now. And each of those four children, after they hear this, this news that Aslan is on the move and perhaps has already landed, they all experience these different things. Edward is filled with fear and terror because Edward has already betrayed his brothers and sisters to the White Witch. He sold them out and he sold the people of Narnia out because he's looking for his own comfort. And the witch has promised that she will give him candy and, and she will make him this king over Narnia as if someone wants to rule over this depressing Arctic wasteland. But, but he's been promised comfort and power and prestige and status, so now he's terrified to hear that Aslan is coming. Peter, who will go on to be the high king, is filled with this sense of bravery, that he wants to do these great things for Aslan. He wants to go on adventures. He wants to live life to the fullest, which is such a cliched phrase. I can't believe I just said it, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to do great things. He knows that he's called for more. Susan, who will be the high queen, is filled with I would call it this sense of beauty, where she's suddenly aware and becomes like almost painfully aware of all the beautiful things in the world, of what, what great art looks like and how color works together and the most beautiful pieces of music and how great food tastes, just all of the things that are, are sensual and good in the world. And Lucy, the youngest of them, is filled with this just overall sense of joy. The sense of joy you have when you wake up and it's the first day of summer break and you know you don't have anything to do for the next two months and you're lying in bed peacefully and everything's great because you haven't gone downstairs yet to get the list of chores for mom or when you wake up on the first day of vacation and your phone's turned off and your boss can't find you and it's like that kind of feeling she's filled with that kind of sense because this high king is coming and even though they don't know who he is they want to know who he is Truth is truth. There's a reason that St. Augustine says, truth is like a lion. You don't have to defend it, you just have to set it free. It'll take care of itself. So they're filled with this kind of expectation. And I wonder if the people that John was preaching to had that same kind of reaction. And I wonder if we have that reaction. I mean, we're preparing for Christmas, yes, but what are we really preparing for? We're preparing for Christ's coming his second coming. We're preparing for him to, to make an end to all things so that he can make a new beginning, so that he can establish a kingdom that will last forever. And what does that excite in us? What does that fill us with? Because there is a chance it could fill us 
with great fear. That perhaps we have not lived in a way that, that is conducive to being one of his subjects or in accord with what it is that he wants us to do. Perhaps it fills us with bravery that we want to go out and be authentic witnesses, but we don't know how. Or perhaps it excites in us joy, but we don't know how to express it. Or it, it fills us with this just sense of beauty, but we don't know how to share that with others. Well, that's what we're called to learn how to do in the Advent season. We're called to repentance. We're called to action. We're called to truth. And so it is worth contemplating this week and praying about what kind of reaction we have to this news that this greater one is coming who will baptize us with fire and the spirit who will set us free on the world and as we consider that truth and as we consider our reaction to it let us ask God to fill us with the graces that we need to be loyal subjects to him so that we can continue to do the work of building up his kingdom here on earth and one day come to be happy with him in the kingdom of heaven. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust and confidence in our Heavenly Father, let us place our petitions before him. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father and all who exercise authority in the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to draw them ever closer to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, may God call forth priests, deacons, sisters and brothers in service to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments and world leaders, may the Prince of Peace guide them in pursuing peace and understanding in times of conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle to find meaning and direction in their lives, may the light of Christ shine forth as a beacon in their search. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us who gathered here, may God's grace make this season a time of renewal and blessing as we open our hearts to the continuing presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, mark the sign of faith, especially Paul Purcell Nell, Patricia Gar Garfold Rucker, Deborah D'Alapone and Nicholas Theophilus. May they come to share the fullness of life with the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Doreen Brasaskini, 
for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear and answer these prayers we make in faith, that they be in accord with your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Sum celi et terra, gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Susanna, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
I forgot part of the homily. And I, I remembered that I forgot it, and I can't remember what it was. That I had something about this whole idea of the cow and the bear being neighbors and, and why it's wrong that the lion should have to eat hay like the ox. And I can't remember how I got to that point last night, so maybe God doesn't want me to. Anyway, I have announcements for you. The Knights of Columbus will be passing out Christmas seals after Mass, requesting donations for St. Anthony's school programs in the McGuire home. Please be generous. You can just take the seals today and make the donation later. That way you can get your Christmas cards done. Um, it's kind of just a reminder to myself to get my Christmas cards done. There's a blood drive today in the Lord's Center in Monroeville. It will run until 1 p.m. Walk-ins are welcome. It's the season of giving, so give the gift of life. We will celebrate The Light is On for you on Wednesday, December 14th from 6 to 9 p.m. in both churches. There will also be an Advent penance service on Monday, December 19th in Monroeville. See the bulletin for more details. If you took a tag from the giving tree, we ask that you return it prior to December 12th. There is, again, more detail in the bulletin. This Thursday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is a holy day of obligation. See the bulletin for more details. Um, because I don't remember when the masses are, I just, I remember which ones I have. Also, Divine Mercy Academy is selling, selling something, lottery tickets or a lottery calendar or something like that, and they are in the narthex, so see them afterwards. And I do believe that is everything. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. To each of these three invocations, please respond with an amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Yeah. <laughs>